Okay, Adam, going on to our next topic, which is, mm. I just said how much I like the guy, but Nintendo president is going to be retiring. Uh, Tatsumi Kimishima is going to be retiring his position. Uh, this all comes after the fact that when Satoru Iwata died in July 2015, uh, he was appointed. He pretty much did make it seem that it was not intended to be a... He was like transitional. Yeah, he was never intended to stay there forever. Uh, but his his um, run, I guess you can say it, well... I would consider his run, even though it's been a very short amount of time, pretty successful. It was, it's been very successful. for In three years, look what Nintendo's happened. In yeah. Nintendo, in three years, they're now like back on top they are just mm -hmm. they are crushing it and it's just its profits are booming it's been three years since his uh in statement but at the end of the law at the end of the day he even said it himself he said he stated that nintendo's management needs to be younger in order to understand the needs of the consumer so yeah. i think that just shows a quality of his character when he came in he wasn't intended to be there for for forever but he's been doing a great job. He's considered to be doing a great job. But he's like, look. I'm old. I'm old. Yeah. I'm not in touch with and, these young people. And he's right. He's almost 70. Yeah. And he just is like, I'm just going to step away. I'm not what the company needs to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm. we are appointing this guy. And his name is Shintaro Furukawa. Furukawa? Furukawa. 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 Is, is it F-U-R-I? F-U-R-U. Furukawa, I guess. Yeah, I think it is Furukawa. It just yeah. sounds really... Weird coming Yeah, it feels like I'm jumbling up my words yeah. here. So, um, here's the thing. And he's definitely a younger guy. He's like mid-50s or something like that. Maybe... maybe. Uh, it, yeah, it, I don't know about much about the same about age that Totoro Water was whenever he uh, passed. Not a lot of people know a lot about this guy. But it is kind of funny because this... This idea that we need to get younger people in there from Kimishima is a very good idea, at least on paper, because there are a lot of... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it could go either way. Yeah. He, the, people, the guy that might have picked might be a complete and total idiot. We yeah, but wait, when I get to his credentials, it, it doesn't seem... It does not seem that way. Mm -hmm. um, but there were, like, reports uh, coming out that ex-Nintendo employees uh, were saying that older members were not allowing suggesting or stifling creativity of younger members of the staff. So, like, there weren't any names named. It doesn't... It just sounds like real life in general. Yeah. It's time for old people to step aside, and they just won't. Well, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you, yeah, you want... Yeah, no, it's... You want, you want some younger person coming in and taking your job? Yeah, it's, I kind of get it, What but... younger person is going to come in and take my job? I'm not even 30... Well, I know, but whenever and, you get up to that point, I understand. I think that Nintendo definitely needs a lot more. I young. think it's a, I think it's a I, toy company, essentially. Yes, but uh, think about it this way. Um, think about it like uh, the whole thing with Toys R Us. Yeah. One of the reasons why Toys R Us failed is because they refused to make any attempts to adapt to a changing market. Yeah. And the reason they did that is because the older management thought they knew their shit. Yeah. And they were stuck in an old mentality. But that's so in that regard, that's different from you know just uh, where I am in a, you know yeah. in a manufacturing position. Okay, um, replacing me wouldn't make any sense because I have no management responsibility. Fair I, enough. I don't make any decisions, so I just go in, do what they tell me to do, and go home. Ah, oh, that's fair enough. There's been a lot of times when I've I've. I've worked places and I'm like, man, these older people just don't know what the hell they're doing. No, I totally have experienced that many times in my mm -hmm. life. But what I'm saying is, is me right now, I don't, I don't feel threatened by that kind of uh, management upshake because I'm not in management. And if I was in management and I was old and I was making bad decisions, I mean, yeah, I'd be pissed about it myself personally. But if it was ultimately the for the better of the people that worked for that company or for the better of society. I mean, it's just me being selfish at that point. Okay. No, that's fair. That's a completely fair point. I actually, I kind of is swaying my opinion on it, like, at least, like, you know, a little bit. Um, but here's the thing is, uh, Shintaro Furukawa, his credentials are actually pretty good, which I was actually saying earlier. Yeah. Um, he joined Nintendo in 1994, and he was the outside director, year. yeah, outside director of the Pokemon company since 2012. 
Mm-hmm. Okay? And so Pokemon Company and Nintendo aren't exactly, like, neck and neck, but they're, like... They're, like they're sleeping so... in the same bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they may not be doing the, the dirty, but they're in the same bed. You might yeah. as well count them, I mean. Yeah. So, he assumed the roles of managing executive officer, supervisor of cor- corporate analysis and administration division, and director of Nintendo since 2016. Yeah. And he is he has worked on the Switch's sales and marketing plan. Which has been some of the better marketing that has come out of nintendo for years for years so i don't think that his credentials are very bad he yeah. seems very well qualified mm-hmm. as i said though on paper he sounds very qualified who knows a lot of people thought satoru Iwata was very well qualified and i did not really agree with a lot of satoru Iwata's decisions, uh, decisions especially during the wii u era and it seemed like he I, had i think he led a little bit too much with emotion and not enough with yeah Maybe you know, facts and rigid figures and things like that. Yeah, sometimes well, you got to do that. And then, and he did a lot of admirable things like taking a pay cut. Oh so no, that he could, like he was a very honorable guy. Oh yeah, I just and I there, overall I would say that Satoru Iwata was successful, but there were a lot of things that he did that pissed me the fuck off. He pissed a lot of people off. So these were what uh, uh, Furukawa's statements were. He said, "Oh, he's also real quick. Let me throw in. He is also the first president to be fully fluent in English." Which is kind okay. of which is kind of cool, I think. Yeah. Uh, but he said we will develop the company to its fullest balancing. Tr- oh, to its balancing tradition, originality, and flexibility. He said, "I grew up playing the Famicom, and I come from that generation. Now, as a member of management with Super Mario creator Shiger- Shigeru Moto, I have a lot of respect for him." And this is, okay. Then he goes. On the other hand, with this job. That I that can't just be it. So I expect to say what needs to be said to run this company. So I thought that was kind of funny that he's like, yeah, I I really respect Shigeru, Shigeru Miyamoto, but I'm gonna do what I need to do to run this company. I I, I thought that was kind of funny because I think me and I, you, I like this guy already. I kind of like him too because he's pretty much like saying like, I'm done letting Shigeru Miyamoto run this goddamn company. Yeah, because. I, I really honestly think Shigeru Miyamoto... I'm going to say something very unpopular. I think Shigeru Miyamoto needs to become the Stan Lee of Nintendo, where he just is in existence, but he has no management or no shots no, called. I totally he's just, fucking he's agree just with the you. face of the company. I totally agree with you, because everything he's touched in the last couple of years has been a fucking disaster. He's like... He's the George Lucas of Nintendo. <laughs> yes. He had yes, his he heyday, is. and when he was in his heyday, he was the best there ever been. But I'm telling you now... He is what sh- what Miyamoto has done with Nintendo for the last I don't know six seven years has been has been prequel era George Lucas bad where you're like no, why totally the has, fuck does this uh, make any sense? Some of the shit that he says too, like um and and obviously this is going to be coming from me so you know it's going to be about F Zero but one of the things he says is like we don't know any we don't we don't have any new ideas for F Zero. And I'm like okay so what do you what were your new ideas for shitting out a new Mario game every year a cat suit? Yeah, <laughs> like that was your new game changing idea. You say you have no game changing ideas for F Zero, just fucking put a track editor in, game changing, or or do nothing. Or because do- sometimes when you do shit, you fuck it all up. Yeah, because look what at ha- Star Fox. Look what. Yeah, look at a Federation Force. Yeah, fuck. Nobody fucking wanted that, and it flopped. I don't think that that was Miyamoto's call, but that's the same shit that I'm talking about. Yeah. And yeah, he was the main person. We're like, that- we're not going to release any old IPs unless we can do something that completely changes the game for them. Nobody wants that shit. When you buy a Mario game, you want a fucking Mario game. When you buy... And Mario was has been great. Super Mario Odyssey was incredible. The I- yeah. But, and, and, but-, but how much did he even really have to do with that? Do we know? I have no fucking idea. I have no idea. But... Because just go like, out there and promote the shit out of it. Be the Stan Lee of Nintendo because yeah. Miyamoto, you just got to like – I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these – Tell the joke in the school bus. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if these ex-Nintendo employees were talking about Shigeru Moto, Miyamoto being like, hey, we should do this. No, no, no. No one's going to want that because I will put all the blame – on Miyamoto because he is the main reason why the Star Fox Zero, Zero was such fucking a fucking sucked. trash. Fucking sucked. It was not, and then the thing is, it, the thing is, is that it wasn't 
fucking garbage. It's just that you can't play the damn thing. Because the fucking controls suck. And you didn't give the option to turn it off. You didn't give the option to turn it off, and you fucked the game because of that. So I, I've got a lot of beef with Miyamoto about specifically that game. Because yeah. F-Zero, I mean F-Zero, Star Fox is one of my favorite Nintendo properties. Yeah, and, I was so excited for that game to come out. And they just fucking screwed it. Like, yeah. They delayed it like a whole, like, five months or something like that to work on the motion controls and it didn't do shit what they should have done is fucking scrap the motion controls they should have at least had the option to turn it off but i love that i expect to say what needs to be said to run this company whether that's gonna be him saying like get the fuck out of here well i don't think they're gonna say get the fuck out of here but they're definitely gonna be like you're gonna you gotta you gotta knock off some of this shit because i get it he's a he's a japanese game treasure I got it. But sometimes whenever you're in an industry too long, it becomes mundane and you just kind of run out of ideas. Yeah. And when you're just like, hmm, how do I make this? I can't put my name on it without there being something cool about it. Motion controls it. What? 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 Cat, cat suit. Cat, cat suit. <laughs> um, water gun. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know you don't like Sunshine, do you? I do not like Sunshine yeah. at all. I've like, never played it. My wife likes it. Bobby hates it. So I hate Mario Sunshine. Beautiful game. And I love the way the water and the and the like dirt effects that they have yeah. on there, like the toxins or whatever. I love that. But the game all together, I think it's total fucking trash. Sorry for anybody that likes Mario Sunshine, but I don't like Galaxy either. Well, and, Galaxy's but, a fucking mess. I know, but a lot of people agree that Galaxy 1 and 2 are great. I, I don't see why. Yeah. I, I thought the game made me sick, and I didn't think the gameplay was all that good. Mario mm-hmm. Odyssey is amazing. Mm-hmm. It may be behind, uh, well, maybe behind Super Mario 64, I think it's the best open world, like open Mario game. So, uh,. Please let this be about Miyamoto. I just do not. I'm not happy with if it's not obvious and apparent at this point. Yeah. I'm no, I, I totally. Yeah, your whole thing like let him become the Stan Lee of Nintendo. That's such a fucking. Yeah. That's right on point. Throw him a cameo. Exactly what they let do. him make like artwork or something. Yeah, he needs to just be a face. He cannot be running shit or making call. Limit and the I, creative I, control. I, I I agree with you. I think. You're probably right. There's there's a there's a, a finite nature to the uh, the amount of creativity involved in one individual. Yeah, I mean, what happens when um mm. when you have a director stay on a on a a franchise too long? I'm going into a movie analogy, like what's a lot of people's biggest problem with uh the Spider-Man franchise, Spider-Man Three. And even Sam Raimi, who directed all three Spider-Man, says, yeah, by the third one, I was completely he done. He was burnt out. He was burnt out. He had no, yep. He's like, I didn't have really any other new ideas. And the same thing, even though I don't mind the movie, Dark Knight Rises is definitely the weakest of the three. And Christopher Nolan, you could clearly see that his juices were just kind of running dry on it. And it happens with a lot of movie franchises. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the prequels were, George, were run dry Mission straight impossible. from... Mission Impossible, but although Mission Impossible apparently after three has been like really, really good. Yeah, I just I don't. I'm not a big Mission Impossible fan. The but first I, movie's good. I'm not really a fan of anything else. I actually that. don't mind. I actually like three. I, I I watched it because it was J.J. Abrams, and I actually liked three. But I never, I didn't watch like Rogue Agent or I believe it was called Rogue Agent, and then the fifth one. I mean, they look like solid movies. I just yeah. I, yeah, but there's aren't uh, clearly aren't the same directors every single yeah. time. I just think that's what needs to happen with Miyamoto. Uh, 